Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, this little sermonette's going to be uh, something I think most of us heard before, but it's really intended for the new believers. <coughs> and it's, what is food? What we're supposed to eat and what we're not supposed to eat. In Leviticus um, chapter 11, verse 1, We'll start off, it says, And Yahweh spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever uh, parted the hoof, and is uh, cloven-footed, and cheweth the cud among the beasts, ye shall eat. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud, or them that divide the hoof as the camel, because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the hoof. He is unclean to you. And the coney, because he cheweth the cud, but not divided the hoof, he is unclean to you. And the hare, because he cheweth the cud, and not divided the hoof, he is unclean to you. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. Of their flesh ye shall not eat, and their carcass ye shall not touch, for they are unclean to you. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever hath fins and scales in the water, in the seas and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. I used to work at the seafood department in Winn-Dixie. And one of the reasons I quit is because I was a new believer and I found it hard to uh, uh, keep from eating the stuff that were not made from food. And that means I couldn't glue scales to the shrimp or fins to the shrimp and say, hey, these have scales and I can't, we can't do that. <laughs> but we go on, it says, And all, the, all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, all that moveth in the waters, and of anything that which is in the waters, they shall, not be, they shall be an abomination to you. They shall be even an abomination to you. You shall not eat of their flesh, but ye shall have their carcasses in abomination. Whatsoever has no fins nor scales in the waters, these shall be an abomination to you. And these are they which shall ha that ye shall have an abomination among the fowls. They shall not be eaten, for they are an abomination. The eagle, and the ossifrog, and the osprey, and the vulture, and the kite after his kind, every raven after his kind. The owl, the night hawk, the cuckoo, the hawk after his kind, and the li little owl, and the cormorant, and the great owl, and the swan, and the pelican, and the uh, deer eagle, <coughs> and the stork, the heron after her kind, and the lopwing, and the bat. Well, nowadays, we consider a bat not a bird, but a mammal. But in the days of the classifications, they had a different system which they classified things. And I guess any warm-blooded animal that flies was considered a bird back then. But like I said, that's one thing that modern-day science, they, uh, they absolutely emphatically state that a bat is not a bird, it's a mammal. Well... That might be the case in the uh, new system of doing things the way you do it now, but that isn't the system of the days of old. But we go on. All fowls that creep going, at, going upon all four, they shall be an abomination to you. These you may eat of in every flying thing, of every flying creeping thing that goeth upon all four which shall have legs above their feet, and to leap upon the earth. Even these of them ye may eat, the locust after his kind, the bold, bald locust after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after its kind. 
But all other flying and creeping things which shall have four feet shall be an abomination to you. Now that's kind of curious, we think, of four feet. Well, insects have um, six feet. I think it's kind of a um, kind of expression. Four-footed mean what's on the ground, what crawls on the ground. They have idioms that we weren't taught about when, uh, when the scripture was written. We're going by today's English. And if they put four feet in there instead of six feet, you know, you have a lot of the atheistic type who want to say liar, liar, you know, because insects have uh, six instead of four. But I think this is more or less a idiom or figure of speech when they say four-footed as cl climbing around on the ground. But in 24, and as for these, ye, for these ye shall be unclean. Whoever touches the carcass of them shall be unclean until the even. And whosoever carries any part of the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean to the evening. The carcass of every beast which, div which divided the hoof and is not cloven-footed, nor cheweth the cud, are unclean to you. Every one that touches them shall be unclean. And whatsoever goeth about on his paws among all men or beasts that go on all four, these are unclean to you. Whosoever shall touch their carcass shall be unclean until the evening. And he that beareth the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. They are unclean to you. Well, we know most animals of that type, that, um, like possum, like rats, like mice. And we all know that they carry disease. It doesn't say that these animals are sin. It says that they are unclean that we should be set apart and we should stay away from them. And we'll continue. These also shall be unclean to you among the creeping things that creep upon the earth, the weasel and the mouse and the tortoise after his kind, and the ferret and the chameleon and the lizard and the snail and the mole. All these are unclean to you among that, all that creep. Whosoever doth touch them when they be dead shall be unclean till evening. And upon whatsoever any of them, when they are dead, doth fall, it shall be, it shall be unclean, whether it be of any vessel of wood, or in raiment, or skin, or sack, or whatsoever vessel be it. Thereon any work is done, it must be put into water, and it shall be unclean to the evening, and so shall it be cleansed. And every fall earthen vessel wherein to any of them that falleth, whatsoever is in it shall be unclean, and ye shall break it. But of all the food which may be eaten, that on which such water cometh shall be unclean, and all drink that may be drunk in every such vessel shall be unclean. And what everything whereupon any part of their carcass falls shall be unclean, whether it be in the oven or ranges for pots, they shall be broken down, for they are unclean, and it shall be unclean to you. Nevertheless, a fountain or pit wherein there is plenty of water sh shall be clean, but that which touches the carcass shall be unclean. And if any part of the carcass fall upon any sown sea, which is to be sown, it shall be clean. But if any part be put upon the seed, and that any part of, but if any water be put upon the seed, and any part of the carcass fall thereon, it shall be unclean to you. And if any beast which ye shall eat, dieth, he that touches the carcass thereof shall be unclean till evening. And he that eateth of the carcass of it shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. He also that beareth the carcass of it shall wash his clothes and be unclean till the evening. And every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth shall be an abomination. It shall not be eaten. Whatever goes upon the belly and whatever goes upon all four, or whatever has, and whatever hath more feet than among all creeping things that creep upon the earth, them ye shall eat, not eat, for they are an abomination. 
Ye shall not make yourselves a bomb with any creeping thing that creepeth, neither shall ye make yourselves unclean with them, that ye shall be defiled thereby. And he signs, I am Yahweh your Elohim. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy. For I am holy, neither shall ye defy yourself with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And people, people think I uh, have a definition of holy. When they say something is holy, that just means it's set apart. I am Yahweh that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your Elohim. Ye shall therefore be set apart or holy, for I am holy. This is the law of the beast and of the fowl and every living creature that moveth upon the waters and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth. To make a difference between the unclean and the clean, between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. And we go, um, and we go to Deuteronomy um, 14 and we'll start in verse 4. And again, it starts on, this is two witnesses, and for the sake of time, I'm not going to read all of it, but I am going to read a little bit of it here. And what, um... Just bear with me just a second. Chapter 14, verse 4. And again, these are the beasts that which ye shall eat, the ox, the sheep, and the goat, the hart, and the roebuck, and the uh, fallow deer, and the wild goat, and the pygarg, and the wild ox, and the camois, and every beast that parteth the hoof, and cleaveth the cleft into two claws, and uh, cheweth the cud am among the beasts, ye shall eat. Nevertheless, ye shall, eat all, ye shall not eat of them with that chew the cud, or of them that divide the cloven hoof, as the camel, and the hare, and the coney. For they chewed the cud, but divided not the hoof. Therefore they are unclean to you. And the swine, because it divided the hoof, yet cheweth not the cud, it is unclean to you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch their dead carcass. These shall ye eat of all those that are in the water. All that have fins and scales shall ye eat. And whatever hath not fins and scales ye may not eat. It is unclean to you. Of the clean birds ye shall eat. But these um, are they which ye shall not eat. The eagle and the ossifraga and the osprey and the glade and the kite and the vulture after his kind and the raven after his kind and the owl the night hawk and the uh, cuckoo and the hawk after his kind, the little owl and the great owl and the swan, and the pelican and the gear eagle and the cormorant, and the stork and the heron after her kind, and the lapwing and the bat. And every creeping thing that flieth is unclean to you, they shall not be eaten. But of all clean fowls you may eat. Ye shall not eat of anything that dieth of itself. Thou shalt give it unto the stranger that is in thy gates, and he may eat. Or thou may sell it to, unto an alien, for thou art an holy people, a set-apart people unto Yahweh, thy Elohim. Thou shalt not uh, cook a kid in his mother's milk. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed, and the field that bringeth forth year by year. And ye shall eat before Yahweh thy Elohim in the place which ye shall choose to place his name, the tithe of the corn, of thy wine, and of thy oil, and the firstling of thy herds, and of thy flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear Yahweh thy Elohim always. And there they're talking about the Feast of Tabernacles. 
I'm going to go ahead and go to Isaiah ch chapter 65. I think I, let's say 65, uh, Isaiah 65, um, verse 3 to 65, 4, okay? A people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face, that sacrificeth in gardens and burneth incense upon the altar, which remain among the graves and the lodge in the mountains, which, which eat swine's flesh. Broth of a bomb, no things in their vessel. Well, a lot of people, a lot of Christians like to celebrate their Easter. And they say it's the uh, death and rebirth of the Savior. Easter Sunday, where they're sacrificing in the altars. They have ham or swine on Easter Sunday. That's supposed to be a big thing. But scriptures here tell us not to do it. And I want to go on to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 17. I mean, uh, 1 Corinthians 10. First Corinthians 10, starting in 17. Oh, I'm in 2 Corinthians. No wonder that looked funny. <laughs> we'll start in 17. For as many, for we being many, are of one bread and one body. We are partakers of that one bread. Behold, Israel after the flesh, are not they, are not they which eat of the sacrifice partakers of the altar? What say I then, that the idol is anything, or that that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to Yahweh. And I would not that ye shall have fellowship with the devils. Ye cannot drink of the cup of Yahweh and of the cup of devils. Ye cannot partake of the Yahweh's table. Ye, ye cannot be partakers of Yahweh's table and of the table of devils. Do we provoke the sovereign to jealousy? Are, are we stronger than he? All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Let no man seek his own, but each his neighbor's good. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles, that eat, asking no questions for conscience' sake. For the earth is Yahweh in the fullness of them. If any of them do not if any of them that believe not bid you to a feast and ye be disposed to go whatever soever is set before thee eat asking no question for conscience sake but if any man say unto you this is offered in sacrifice unto idols eat not for his sake that showeth it and for conscience sake for the earth is Yahweh and the fullness thereof Conscience, I say, is not thy own, but of the other. For why is thy liberty judged of another man's conscience? For if I be a partaker, why am I even spoken of for that which I give thanks? Whether therefore ye eat, drink, or whatsoever ye do, all do it in the honor of Yahweh. Give none offense neither to the Jews, nor the Gentiles, nor to the assembly of Elohim. For even as I please all, even as I please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many that may be saved. 
And then Timothy, we're going to go to chapter 4, 1 Timothy chapter 4 through 1 uh, Timothy uh, chapter 4 verse 5. Now, as the Spirit uh, speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from meats which Elohim have created to be received with thanksgiving, and right here, this a lot of people use this as an excuse to eat, be able to eat anything that they want. But you start off by forbidding to marry. What faith forbids its uh, priest to marry? Is it not the Catholic faith? We start with forbidding to marry and commanding them to abstain from meats, which. Elohim have created to be received with thanksgiving. That's not to say uh, that since he created the swine, we can eat it in thanksgiving. What that means is whatever it was created to be eaten in the first place, that's what we should receive with the thanksgiving. For every creature, of, okay. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which Elohim have created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and knoweth the truth. For every creature of Yahweh is good and nothing be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of Yahweh and with prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, then it shall be a good minister of Yeshua the Messiah, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. But refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto holiness. For, the bo for bodily exercise profited little, but holiness is profitable unto all things, having the promise of the life that is now is and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. And we go on. Uh, I think I'm going to read the rest of this because I think there's a little point in here, a little nugget. And in verse 9 says, This is a faithful saying worthy of all acceptance. For, all, for therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living Yahweh, who is the Savior of all men, especially those that believe. These things command and teach. Let no man despise the youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in behavior, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Until I come, giving attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not that the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on the hands of the body of elders. Meditate upon these things, and give thyself wholly to them, for they profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself, and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this shall, be, shall both save thyself and them that hear me. And we... I'm going to go ahead over to Timothy. Well, I just finished Timothy. We're just talking about foods. Like I said, we don't have... Um, we don't have everything that's on the ground that we're supposed to eat. When they're talking about food, in the context in Scripture, it's talking about the things that was given to us to eat. Um, there's been uh, some... Uh, uh, one of the reasons we have so much trouble today is because shellfish is something that's not supposed to be eaten. It's supposed to be something that uh, lives around the rivers and everything to clean the water. And a lot of people, 
they like to eat oysters. I used to be guilty of that too, but if um, we turn around and look at oysters, we think they're, um, they're basically aquarium filters. A single oyster can uh, f filter many gallons of water in an hour. And this is the kind of stuff that people want to put in their mu uh, mouth. All these creatures listed, they were created by Elohim, but they're not meant to be eaten. We have a lot of cleaner, uh, a lot of these critters that people like to eat are those that uh, clean and replenish the planet. But well, as long as people eat them, we're going to continue to have uh, algae blooms. We're going to continue to have polluted waters because that which was put out there too clean is being removed by people. And like I said, this is just a review. Everybody in here knows pretty much everything I said, but sometimes we have new people come in that don't know. They're not to be, you know, looked down on or anything. They're here to be taught, and that's all this is meant to do is teach them. Hallelujah.